What's up guys, Zarek Underdogs of Addiction here. Today's video, what's on my heart, is how to let go of the past. How to move on in your life. I mean, I got a big dose of this shit. Um, you know, uh, this last year and a half. Um, my backstory, I've been in, in treatment for 10 months. I, um, I did graduated Treehouse Recovery based in SoCal. I went to the Portland location. I did five months there plus two months of sober living. I had a brief relapse of three days, quickly realized like this is not what I want for my life. And um, my mentor from Treehouse had a situation for me in, in Boise that he was building and I, I came here. But, um, you know, my whole life, you guys, you know, I lived in the same place. I lived in Olympia, Washington, the capital of Washington. It's like an hour south of Seattle. I love where I'm from. I love the Northwest. I bleed purple and gold, Huskies, Sonics, Seahawks, Macklemore, you know, fucking all the artists from Seattle, bro. Kurt Cobain, Nirvana, Foo Fighters. Like, I love where I'm from. Um, but as my addiction grew, I tried cocaine for the first time when I was 28 years old. Prior to that, alcohol was my main vice. But I was never like a, a regular alcoholic. I was somebody who drank and bitch drank on the weekends. Um, you know, and I'd recover after a day and then I could get back to my normal life. But once I introduced cocaine, it was it was it was over for me and, and it and it was a slow decline until I had to check myself into treatment. But where I'm getting at, you know, is sometimes we get stuck in these places that we're safe and we're comfortable in. And um it's scary to leave the bubble. And for those of us who have parents that kind of maybe coddled us or are my men out there who were raised without fathers, such as myself, you know, my dad was in and out the first 10 years of my life, but he was in jail a lot. He was drunk a lot. And um, we have a good relationship now. If you're watching this pops, I'm not hating on you. I'm just speaking the truth. My, my dad's someone who suffers from mental illness and as well as addiction. And he was a professional drummer. Um, and he did teach me a lot of good things growing up, but he couldn't be there at the capacity I needed to teach me how to become a man. And so growing up, I was always a rebellious kid. I had ADHD. I was a risk taker, but my mom was always kind of the opposite and always trying to keep me, keep me back. And, um, you know, because of my codependent relationship with my mother, with, with certain people in my family, I allowed that to keep me in the same place. And, um, a lot of the trauma in my life happened in that same place. Um, and up until about 28, like I did not hate where I was from and I still don't hate it. I love it. But once I got into the cocaine life, um, it just ran a train on my life per se. And, um, you know, I, towards that, it progressed into a user, to a, a dealer, um, forgetting about my passions of music and MMA and weight training and making motivational videos and using my gifts to help change the world. And, um, I got into numerous amounts of uh, unhealthy relationships towards the end. Both of my last two ex-girlfriends were addicts. Um, one was uh, addicted to marijuana every day and then was did meth. Um, she was in recovery from meth, um, but relapsed uh, once we broke up. And then uh, the other one I was with was addicted to heroin and cocaine. And there wasn't a day that we hung out that she didn't want cocaine and I would do it with her sometimes too. but. When I met her, I wasn't quite uh, that crazy with it, but um, those relationships fucked me up because I have a lot of um, rejection and, and uh, attachment issues from my childhood. Um, and those things played out. And then that pain, it led me to just chase that numbing even more. And basically what happened with me, guys, is I just got to a point where the pain was so much of staying where I was, all the memories, being in that same apartment for eight years almost. And like, you know, um, I got to hit this real quick. But uh, being in that same apartment and all those memories and emotions seeped in those walls and all the pain. And there was a lot of good times too, but towards the end, it was just a lot of rough days, man. It was the roughest patch of my life. Like the last year and a half before I went to treatment, treatment was hard, but the year and a half prior to that, man, it was like suicide Sunday every Sunday. And just like, like my life became completely unmanageable. And I was just like, damn, how the hell? That I get here and my mom always used to tell me son there's always going to be harder days ahead and you got to be strong and um, where I'm getting at guys is that was always my Achilles heel is um, I love where I was from so much I never want to leave like I would travel I've been to different states and places like that but I'd always want to come home 
And I realized the biggest thing holding me back in my music career and my life in general was my inability to let go of where I'm from and all places and things that I know. And it took me becoming, be uh, entering a place of so much pain that I surrendered and finally let go. And um, where I'm getting at with that is the last 10 months, I, I have not lived in my home state of Washington. I've lived in Oregon and now I live in Idaho. Um, and I plan to, my dream was always to move down to Nashville and work on work in the studios down there or move to Austin, different places. Um, now I'm in a place where I'm comfortable and uncomfortable. Like I, I went back home briefly when I relapsed and like, I didn't even feel comfortable where I was at. Like I didn't even feel comfortable in my hometown. It was, it was really strange. And I, a lot of you guys who probably moved out of your hometowns and stuff, you can relate to that. And um, what you find is like in your hometown, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, 80% of the people that you grow up with stay there. And, and some of them that's awesome and, and they're happy with it. But then there's people like me who run it to the, to the ground and you have to get out. And um, I've just been on this journey of having to, like, God, the universe is cleansing me and making me let go of all the past, all the pain. Um, I was in a really codependent, deep relationship with a woman for almost two years. Um, and it was the first time in a long time I let someone into my heart because I was scared of what was going to happen. And it happened. And all the warning signs, all the triggers were there when I, uh, when I got in the relationship. But I was naive. And, but I, it's kind of like when you get in that relationship and you know that it's going to be a train wreck, but you get love bombed the other person, you know, it's just this codependent thing. And, and I've had to learn to really love myself. I've had to learn to trust myself. I have had to learn to live outside of my comfort zone and my life is beginning to change. I've been in sober living for, for 10 months, you know, like sometimes your, your, your lowest and most fucked up times in your life is really God's biggest blessing. Because I'm, as I'm looking back on this journey, I've grown more in this last year than I have in the last 10 years, at least internally. And um, I feel like the, my future is going to be so much brighter because I've learned to get out of that comfort zone. And anybody that's successful in anything in life will tell you that you have to get used to being uncomfortable and it has to become your new norm. We're not meant to just say sanitary and complacent. And um, that's what I became in my life. And I think a lot of the reasons I used drugs and alcohol was because I was just, I started to become miserable with myself, with the fact that I was unwilling to like take bigger risks. Like I'd fly to LA and shoot a music video. Or I'd go to Arizona with my buddy or flew to Florida to visit a homie, but I wouldn't stay. And some of my closest friends, I've I had the privilege of having friends that lived all over the world. My best friends from Warsaw, Poland, my other friend was a military brat. My other best friend, his parents are from China, so or um, Cambodia, so they travel all over. And um, they always you tell me, they're like, Zarek, if you want to take it to the next level, bro, like you got to start getting out of your comfort zone. And um, and that's just the facts, you know. I had a lot of success in the music industry. My YouTube's got like what over forty million views. I've worked with a bunch of labels, but what's holding me back to becoming that next level artist or that next level. Uh, executive or some crap in the music industry working with the labels is not wanting to move over to those cities not doing the certain things I need to do and I have homies that I work with in the music industry who I've seen just flourish because they picked up and went you know all the stories you hear about people being sex successful is because they they got uncomfortable and there's so many of us out there with so many gifts and talents that the world will never see because we will not step out of our comfort zone or maybe we have a message we want to share but we're too scared to get in front of a camera and talk about it, you know? Um, so I just want to just spread that message today of just urging you guys that the growth is in the discomfort. It's in the conversations you don't want to have. It's in loving yourself. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's in, you know, like just really truly finding who you are and having a connection with some, something outside of yourself. Some people don't believe in God. Um, you know, but you got to find connection you know, with something, if it's not with a God, make it with other people, you know, and, and keep people around you. They're going to hold you accountable and that actually care about you. And, um, you know, when I'm making these video guys, I'm, I'm speaking to myself as well to remind myself of these lessons that I'm teaching you, um, that have been taught to me and I'm just spreading the message and, um, you know, so that, that's just what I got for you guys today. Um, I've had to move on from that tremendous heartbreak that, that was so hard to get over. There was a child involved. Getting over the fact that I haven't put out any music in two years. I hadn't wasn't making videos. 
get over the fact that I haven't been training MMA like I, I wanted to. I think God stripped all those things away from me so I can look at myself in the mirror and have to learn to love the man in the mirror and learn that I have to take care of myself internally, even when the world shatters behind me. Um, and so if you're going through anything like that today, I just want to let you know not to give up and just find yourself again, find your grounding and just push yourself to get out of the, the comfortable uh, zone you're in. Because that comfort, I swear, it'll kill you. It's okay to have a little comfort in life and stuff like that. But as soon as you, you get super comfortable, you stop pushing yourself, you stop growing. And, you, and that really affects your happiness. And that really affects how you feel about yourself. And so... With that said, I'm going to end this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Um, and I'm going to be putting out a lot more content like this. And please comment below kind of like on your experience um, with this topic. I'd love to hear everybody's experience. Thank you.